this eve today continue to remember in prayer our friend bunny uh, she is still with us and and the family the family's just kind of tired and exhausted taking care of, of bunny and dick and pray for any place for them and so continue to remember them in prayer if you would and our friend nancy uh moreno kind of i got a call from her sister daughter yesterday has not done well the last couple of days and a little bit of a a, a turn in a not so good way. So they're having a conference with doctors today. She's still on the ventilator. So she was kind of ramping up there this week and then that hit her hard. So uh, continue remembering her and the family in prayer and listening with the doctors because you just never know with this COVID. So I suggest, you know, whether you wear a mask or not, that's one thing, but it's always good to wash your paws. You know, just keep them clean. That always helps. It's good for hygiene and with colds or anything like that throughout this winter months to, to do the best that you can. But we're here. This is our traditional Thanksgiving service, and we're grateful. We still have a few people that are quite ill this, these days as well as the colds and flus, and so we're grateful they're not with us and they're not sharing that good cheer. They, they can share later. Uh-oh, I heard that cough. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, also, as you know, today kind of starting uh, with uh, our harvest offering related to the, the heater, and I have reached out to Ron, and I said, Ron, we're paying about $6,000 for the heat, and it's nice when it comes on, and then it's a little cool an hour or two later. I said, can you figure that one out? And he says, I am going to check into that. So... Uh, that was a couple days ago. He's going to talk with guys at work, so we kind of know that hiccup there. Uh, because if you were here an hour ago, it was like a sauna. But uh, so we'll figure that one out as time goes along. So we'll just put that behind us and uh, stay here. And uh, you know, if you if you get real cold, then get some close fellowship and just kind of you know whatever. Yeah. I, uh, so we're focused on this time of giving thanks and reflection of what the Lord has done for us. And so as we've got this morning kind of lined up, this is our traditional time of testimony. So we have two different uh, slots this morning that you can share and give your testimony. We'll have a mic that will be able to share that with you. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, spend a time of, of focus. Our call to worship is going to be from Psalm 105. I'm going to share a few thoughts on this down the road and then we'll have opening prayer and then we've got some music with uh, with uh, because he lives so this is from psalm 105 it's a great psalm. together let's read oh give thanks to the lord call upon his name make known his deeds among the peoples sing to him sing praises to him tell of all his wondrous works glory in his holy name let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he utters. Bo's going to open up in a word of prayer. I'm grateful that he's here today with us and uh, kind of getting in the saddle a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, pray with me, please, this morning. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today and the special service that we have uh, and the chance to fellowship with each other, hear some of the things that we're thankful for, some of the things that have brought us to this day. I'm super excited to hear from everybody this morning, and I know that you are too. And I just want to thank you again for this time that we get to, to worship you and praise you not only through singing, but through sharing our testimonies and sharing the things that we're thankful for uh, this season. I'm thankful for so many things, and I can't wait to hear um, what everybody else is as well. So again, just thank you for this time. I pray, I pray that you would bless it um, and that we would be able to just come together this morning and, and uh, be a congregation that is thankful for everything that you've done. We love you, Lord. and. Uh, Pray that you would bless this time of worship as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Chris. That was your voice in there. Wasn't you recording different tracks? I sang a trio today. <laughs> she's good. You've heard of Ben Triloquist. Well, she's a tri kill quillum <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, she's got all three down. And Mr. Cervantes, thank you for being with us today. You're how young are you? You're 80. 80. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, and he worked all last week for 30 hours, so good for him. So grateful that he's here with us today. Uh, I want to share a few minutes uh, just as we kind of get thinking about this time of testimony and this special time of the year. So what does this mean? And you've heard the joke, that means nothing as far as the pastor watching the time. But the story is, this is, this is a watch I bought during seminary, just a couple years ago, <laughs> at Whitmark's. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Now. Yeah, so you just do the math. Yeah, and uh, there were, was this, and then there was sundials nearby, and, and uh, <laughs> sand dials, <laughs> you know. And, and I got this at Whitmark during the time, and I think uh, Jake Tijima's mom actually sold it to me. Remember Jake? Uh, she worked at jewelry stores with that. Well, have you been by? Jupiter it's cool. and, and it's level, it's flat. The old Whitmark store is knocked down. It's been there for years, decomposing, you know, just disintegrating in there. And the chow how neck, and it's done, it's flattened out. And, uh, and I share that because it was kind of an eyesore, and I know they tried to sell it on and off through the years, and now it's, it's, it's deconstructed. I mean, it's torn down, and then hopefully something new will come up on it, you know? So with that, I'm thinking, our life in Christ, in, before we knew Christ, we were a decrepit tent marred by sin, right? Body, soul, and spirit. And, and decomposing, we're decon we, are, we were just, it was an old building with no, and Christ came and he's in the process of refurbishing and, and not just, you know, building from the foundation up and he's, he's renewing us and he's giving us hope and, and, and it's a wonderful thing in this transformation process that he's done, this new life in Christ and transforming us into his image. And I, as, I, as I thought about that and leading into this, my thought is, is that how very important for us to constantly reflect upon that where we would be without Christ. Hmm? And how certain situations and circumstances of life would have been difficult and challenging, as if they're all gonna be that way, but even more so. And how many times they've sat with the Wooden family recently and other families with grief, but if we didn't know the Lord, how do you get through this kind of things and the difficulties that they had there. And, and it's so it's very important for us to, to acknowledge and reflect upon that so this week, as uh, you know, I'm the pastor, I'm supposed to speak on, you know, giving thanks. <laughs> Here we go. And I'm going, okay, let's look back 2021. What do you want to be thankful for, Kurt? <laughs> I'm going. Now, I don't know about you, but it, it, it took a little while to kind of, you know, it, it, it took more than a little while to kind of bring back some thoughts and memories. I, I know I have used this as an illustration before, but I continue to do it. So at that time, in my quiet time this last week in the morning, I'm going, Kurt, you, you journal every Monday, and you have this praise list. And I have shared that with you through the years, that I have this prayer list, and not this praise list. I have a prayer list with it, too. But these are my praises that have started back since 1909. <laughs> 14, I should have started earlier. But I... As I thought there, and where I'm going with this is that I couldn't pull up maybe one or two things. I read this, I had 18, 19 entries for 2021. That it was extremely healthy to review. Because I just, you just don't remember. You probably can remember the negative stuff, huh? That comes pretty easy. So obviously the homework after this little devotional thought is, I hope that you have some system whether it's a, a piece of paper inside the, 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 your Bible or your digital or whatever, that you are intentionally acknowledging uh, blessings of God throughout the year. Because you get to a Thanksgiving time and you go, I know I'm supposed to be thankful, and I know there were some things to be thankful for, but I can't remember them. 
And so I'm going to, you know, obviously challenge us a little bit more at the end as you think about that. So I was reading in, in the scriptures in old, the 105 of Psalms, just as a great, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time, we'll just read this again. But the psalmist, these are action words, these are intentional words. Worship, like we do a, a weekly service, is good, that kind of forces us to reflect on God. Thanksgiving especially forces us to think back. It's, it needs to be intentional. We need to take time and reflect. Generally, we don't like to do that. Bing, bang, boom. Get our devotions in. Hopefully that's happening. But get on. And, and meditation and thinking through and reflection is actually very healthy. So the psalmist, first couple verses of 105 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. So even in thoughts about that, giving thanks, that's something that we offer. We're not forced to do. We offer. We want to give thanks to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, he says. Call upon his name. Even in Genesis, it says, And at this time man called upon the name of the Lord. At the name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We pray in the name of Jesus. Incredible that we pray and we call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. That's, that's just kind of as we interact. What incredible evangelism always makes us a little nervous, but if we are grateful and acknowledge God's work in our life with those around us, that's an incredible testimony. Reflection upon what God says. So make known among his deeds among the peoples. Some of the translations say nations. But acknowledge him. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Yeah, make a joyful noise. I don't know, have you ever tried to pray in your or sing at your devotional time or put some music on? There's something special about that. It works well. I mean, once in a while, well, not too many people here in the afternoon. I want to make sure Winston's not here. But if you get in the afternoon and you kind of, so I have a Bose system with, this, with, the, with my computer. Crank it up a little bit. That's okay. Whether you want to stomp your foot or not. But I mean, music, it just motivates. It's a healthy thing. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. So tell of his wondrous works. That obviously means you acknowledge it. Glory in his holy name. Glory has to do with weightiness and significance and power. Glory in who he is and who we are and the holiness of his name. Every knee will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Holy, 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 for I am the Lord God Almighty, who is and was and is to come. Isaiah fell on the floor when he had the presence of holy God. The glory to his name. Let your hearts, uh, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice from inside. Seek the Lord. Yeah, interesting action words. Seek the Lord in the strength. Seek the Lord. Look for it. Seek the Lord and his strength, as he's promised, his daily grace and strength for the day. Seek his presence continually. Wow, there's a whole sermon in itself about the presence of God. And, and how do you seek the presence of God? He is the Holy Spirit indwelling us, but I mean, it's the awareness and connectedness with it instead of the aloneness that sometimes that we feel. Remember, <laughs> easier said than done some days, right? Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. Interesting, not only got miracles and the judgments, so there was decisions that were made. Remember, remember, how do you remember? You gotta reflect, have a tool, an instrument, a skill to be able to remember and reflect upon what the Lord has done. So just a couple of thoughts as we kind of wrap this up. I heard an interesting conversation this week on the radio from a pastor that had come alongside Christian leaders that had fallen. And uh, not, some of it was moral, some of it was just walked away from the faith. And, uh, and you know, that just gets my attention and, uh, and, and just kind of sobering. But he used an interesting word. He used the word deconstruction of their faith. There was a process of deconstruction of their faith. It didn't happen overnight. Somehow, some way, the enemy and old nature and whatever planted seeds of thoughts and doubts and pride and selfishness or whatever, and it incubated. And over a period of time, deconstructed 
slowly put holes in their faith and they allowed it. Instead of bringing every thought captive, make it obedient to Christ, they opened themselves up and woe is me or what about or this, that, and the other thing. And it's kind of scary when you think about that. And obviously in a few years of ministry, a lot of the guys I went to seminary with are no longer in the ministry for whatever reason. But I like this, well, I don't like it, but I think it's a good way of looking at it. Maybe years ago we talked about backsliding. Well, that's a huge umbrella. But there's always a deconstruction of a person's faith commitment because faith is a decision of loyalty and commitment to God. It's not a feeling, it's a decision, and you maintain it. If it's deconstructed, it's stuck, you know, you, you got the roofing, the, the, the shingles are coming off the roof. The doors are cracked, the windows are broken, and it's the air's coming in. It's, it's, it's letting in the outside environment. Where am I going with this? I think, scary, isn't it? That praise has a lot to do with maintaining our faith. Now just throw it out there, but those that have a healthy perspective of gratitude and appreciation to God, that maintain that helps, especially when the storms of life come. We're all the enemy is trying constantly to deconstruct our faith. You know, the challenges, the trials that God allows, and it, it strengthens us. At the same time, I think worship is, when we're going through it all, it's really hard to be thankful, isn't it? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Yeah, right. So I throw that out to us today as we think about this celebration, the testimonies in a few minutes, that we maintain a healthy private and corporate thanksgiving not just once a year but year round because I think it's kind of a barometer to where our faith is it's sure easy to be thankful praise God from whom all blessings flow when things are going well when it's a real challenge and a pain and you are struggling it's a little harder but I tell you it's kind of like cranking up the music in the afternoons Reflection and thanking God is a very healthy, healthy thing. I'm sure I've mentioned it somewhere along the line. One of my professors at Cornerstone uh, at, at seminary, Dr. Beals, one of Jennifer's favorite, uh, is a missiologist. He, he said, guys, go on in ministry, start a file. Start a file, guys, at all the things that God's done. Because there will be times down the road in ministry you'll want to quit and give up. But you need to go to that file and see what God's done. He was so true. And that's not just for people in ministry as it were full time. But I mean, for all of us, we need to have a file. And that's your homework assignment. Start something. Whether it's a slip of paper in your Bible, whether it's a digital, whatever you do. Start something so in 2022 you can look back and say, yeah, I saw the hand of God. I just went through some of these from years ago and I'm like, now, another point, and I should uh, now allow you to share, is that I had a tendency here just to write down all the good things. Oh, this was a benefit and a gift to the church. This happened. This was a wonderful thing. So and so, great. But you know what? There's another side of it, too. It's that it is harder to be thankful for the tough things that has forged our faith. I didn't put those in quite as easy, and they didn't come out as easy. And sometimes I didn't want to acknowledge it. But may I suggest to myself and all of us that that's extremely healthy. Not only the, yay, God, moments, <coughs> but also, Lord, this was a pain in a lot of places. But I learned. And thank you. Uh -huh. That's kind of where the rubber meets the road in our faith. Because it's going to come, and the challenge is going to be there. Now, what are we going to do with it? And are we going to still offer praise and thanks to our Heavenly Father? So, the homework assignment for the next year, some kind of system that you organize those things of which you've seen the hand of God at work and offer praise and thanks to. That's my challenge to you today. And 
quite honestly, as the longer I serve him, the sweeter I can look. Oh, wow, yeah, God, you, you, you are working. You did provide. Thank you. Well, I share that with you today, and I hope that that helps stimulate some thought as we prepare our hearts to give some thanksgiving uh, testimony. So we're going to sing, let's just praise the Lord, and then we're going to start testimonies. Um, Bo's going to be with the mic, and uh, after, after we sing the song, and then we'll have two different sets for testimonies.